Hey guys, all right, today I'm going to talk about uh, different devices that you can use with your horse. Um, you can have devices that will track maps. If maps is all you're worried about, um, you have uh, that, that would be something like this. Um, something like this, this is the Garmin Phoenix 5X. This does everything, maps, heart rate, and all the data you could possibly want. That's on this one. And then there's heart rate monitoring only. <clears throat> so this, uh, this one only monitors heart rate. And then this is a um, handheld one. The electrodes are in here. You just press, actually here. Here's the electrodes over here, this side, this side, and the transmitter. So um, th that that's going to be the the uh, three components to the heart rate. Okay, you're going to have some kind of transmitter. <clears throat> you're going to have two electrodes, and then you're going to have a receiver that's going to tell you what the numbers are. So this is the one for. Um, just putting it on the horse when you're standing next to him and you know they, they they use this for like vet checks and stuff or if you're just monitoring you know without having to saddle up and everything and then the one that they wear it would be this is the transmitter for this one and then the electrodes would just clip into there that's these two then one electrode is going to go um, on the girth and the other one's going to go under the saddle and this and then it's going to wireless wirelessly transmit to the receiver okay so that is just heart rate um, that's basically all the information that it'll give you so you can get devices like that then the Garmin how this works the, the transmitter is in here the reason why I modified it is because I was having problems with the electrodes they just plug right into there and I was having problems on um, extreme rides sometimes these these electrodes will uh, pop out and stuff and so um, that's why it is in here protected and it's, it's just a mod that I did but anyways same thing you got the two electrodes and then you got the transmitter and it's not bulky it's very easy to set up and run it and then it's going to send it to a receiver and this is my receiver right now now um, that tells you everything and then for maps okay uh, there is um, there is a website, a group called Open Trails. Uh, it's very, very awesome. Um, you can get a membership. It's like $15 and up for membership. And this is a network of, and a group of people that do trails all, all over the place. And they download <clears throat> GPX files. GPX files, you know how Word files or document files are called uh, DOC? It's, it's the... It, it's the extension at the end of a file name it, that, that, that dictates, you know, what it, it tells you what type of file it is. Well, map files are just called GPX files. Um, there, there's, there's a few different types. Uh, like, you know, doc files, um, or word files can be doc or text or, you know, whatever else. Uh, picture files can be JPEGs or uh, picked files and stuff. Well, map files are GPX and then there's a few other uh, types of files, uh, but the commonly one is GPX files, okay? So, you can use your phone and uh, Android or iPhone and that is going to be like the, the, the cheapest, easiest way to start off with. All you do is download an app and uh, some popular ones are Easy Trails, Edamondo, and some other ones. You can use the, the phone and the, and the app and that will track your miles. It'll track, usually track distance, speed, and uh, they'll draw you a map and all that stuff. Now the downside <clears throat> to that is I like to use my phone while I'm on trail um, to take pictures, to take video, um, you know, other things. And I always want to make, I always start a ride with a full battery and I want to make sure that I always have enough battery if I have to make an emergency call, right? Uh, if you use a, a mapping app, it has to be open and running in the background the entire ride. So if you're doing, you know, a five hour ride with the running in the background, stuff like that, that could, you know, mess things up. If you're trying to take pictures or take video, that could mess things up with, with it trying to do the map in the background as well. Uh, also, 
depending on your phone and stuff, you're crossing a river or whatever, you know, and you're juggling a phone. You're on the horse, the horse spooks, your phone drops, you know, um, the, 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 so the, you're juggling a phone and accidents can happen to your phone. Um, so th that's the other downfall. And then the other downfall is since this app is open and running in the background, um, there, there's uh, chances of accidental button pressing and turning it off or um, stuff like that. I've done it where, you know, I get to the end and then I realized that oh the the phone accidentally shut off or or I accidentally pushed a button somehow during the ride and and now I had nothing um, so those are all um, things that you want to consider if you're going to use your phone uh, the, the other thing is a big one is in a lot of the endurance races and a lot of the trails you're out in the boonies there is no cell reception if you don't have cell reception your your cell isn't going to work to map uh, so that's another thing and then and the the data that they give is actually really good some of these apps are really impressive and so the, the data is all good but it's just mapping data and you can from those from those apps you can download uh, export and import GPX files so this group um, open trails they they have tons of information for their members and everything and it's a like I said a network of people that are downloading their trails and then you can pick up a trail and then go go do it they also hold um, uh, cyber con uh, cyber competition so you know you can compete against other people or they have challenges and stuff like that and it's all on your own it's it's all on your own at your time and stuff like that so so that's a really good resource um, if you don't do endurance uh, riding you just want to do trail riding and stuff that that's a that's actually a really impressive resource to have they have a Facebook group and everything so um, that's for the phone. Now, <clears throat> the next thing that you can do is get some kind of handheld. I like the handhelds because they are um, very detailed. You get a much bigger screen, so it's a bigger map, and th they're very accurate because it's such a big unit, and its sole purpose is to map. It's it's very accurate and and, and all that, um, and it gets really good satellite reception and everything. Um, versus a watch, this watch has an altimeter bar barometer compass as. Um, it has heart rate sensors on the back of it. It has all of this stuff built into this tiny little space. And so this one's accuracy is not going to be as good as a big unit uh, that, that can support more uh, hardware for <clears throat> more accuracy, right? Now, Garmin will argue with me on that, but I have done tests. So anyways... Um, something like this is great. This is an old, old unit. This is a 10-year-old unit. So they have better units out there. But once again, you know, it's it's bulky. And I was having a problem, I, almost the same thing as a phone, you know, trying to juggle um, how to pull it out. I was wearing it around my neck and stuff, but then it was bouncing when I rode. And then these buttons here, I was accidentally pressing buttons all the time. It wouldn't shut off, um, but it was, you know bouncing buttons and everything and stuff and so it was just a clunky clunky way to have my map um, on me and it was kind of annoying uh, because around my neck uh, when I do endurance rides then I have all the vet papers and the ride map and stuff like that already around my neck and then I'm going to have this around my neck as well and you know I'm going long distances so you know it, it just gets annoying um, and then if I put it in my saddle bag then I have to fish it out in order to get to it so <clears throat> That was not the the best option for me. So the best option for me is to have it all in a watch form, and I absolutely love the Garmin watches. I've been I've been, I've been using uh, GPS devices and heart rate monitor devices on my horse for the last over ten years. Um, this is ten years old, and this is ten years old, and um, the watches I've had that you know I, I've been upgrading them and this is my newest upgrade uh, the, the, the technology is amazing right now this will tell you everything you need to know personally for personal fitness like your sleep um, it has sleep analysis your heart rate uh, vo2 lactate threshold um, along with with everything else um, 
on an endurance race, I will be able to uh, download the race map onto here, and then um, I'll be able to put a waypoint at, at the vet checks and at the base camp, and then it will calculate, all right, this is your whole time remaining based on your average speed, and then uh, this is the time remaining and the, and the estimated time of day of arrival to your waypoint, aka vet check or base camp, and then to your next waypoint, and then to your final destination and stuff like that. I mean, it, it breaks down so much data, it's incredible. Plus, it hooks up to my horse's heart rate. So then all of this data will then be sent um, uh, via Bluetooth to your phone, and you have an app called Garmin Connect, and then that app will tell you a ton of more detail. Then it will... Um, then you can pull it up on a, on your desktop as well and pull it up on the website, the desktop, and it has way more detail th than that as well. And basically, the most function, the most detail, all the data you could possibly even think of, this is it. Um, there are other, you know, like Apple Watch and stuff like that, but they're more for fitness-minded people because Apple Watch, you know, they, they focus more, okay, Apple Pay, um, accessibility with your phone and stuff like that. And, you know, so it's more like that. This is more like extreme athlete, pure athletic data that, you know, probably is way overkill for most people. But um, for like total geeks and nerds like me, it's like, oh, awesome. All right. So the, then why, why would you want all of this? Okay. Uh, mapping should be pretty, pretty basic. You know, I can go and explore trails, come back and edit my trail map um, to erase all of the mistakes that I did and show only the trail that led from point A to point B. And then I can export that uh, file, GPX file, send it to my friends and say, hey, you know, if you want to get to in and out from the riverbed, here is the map that'll show you how. They can then upload that that file onto their device, and then they can just follow the map and, and go there. So um, on open trails, then you have all these people doing this for all of these different you know maps all across the country and all that. It's so that's amazing. You know, you, you uh, if you're wanting to go camping and explore a new trail, um, you don't have to rely on just um, just kind of getting lost and, and fumbling your way through. You can actually find people that have already done those trails, download their maps, okay? So that's kind of obvious. Now, why would you want a heart rate monitor? Um, a lot of people, since heart rate monitor is kind of new technology, right? And a lot of people are like, well, you should, you should just know your horse. There is never a replacement for knowing your horse. That is, that is the utmost. You need to know your horse no matter what. But... Beyond knowing your horse, beyond knowing what signs to look for, the heart rate data that you get cannot lie. It does not lie to you. So, um, but horses do. Horses do lie. Their impulsion. I know horses that that might be feeling sick, might be feeling ill, might be a little bit lame. Um, you know, lameness is on the lower scale, but they're lame, they're hurting and all that. But in a race situation, when the adrenaline is up, they hide all of that. You know, it's, it, it, they suck it all up and they, they do the work. But since they push themselves um, past what they should have, like, you know, we humans do that too, then they get into trouble. That's how you get issues with tying up and, um, and all these other metabolic or, or whatever issues. The heart rate monitor will not lie. If the horse is saying, I can work, the heart rate could tell you, no, there's something wrong. And that happens all the time. So this, the heart rate monitor eliminates that question mark um, if it's all set up correctly okay now there yeah there there are problems if you don't set up the electrodes the electrodes move or the device fails or the device is malfunctioning and all that so yeah you know there there are those that you got to be careful about but when it's working correctly and everything nothing can replace the data the the completely objective data of a heart rate monitor i ride other people's horses um Lasser, my own horse, is extremely fit. 
I don't really need a heart rate monitor on him because I, you know, him and I have a great communication. Um, but if I ride someone else's horse, I cannot expect their horse to have the same fitness level as my horse. It, it, their fitness level has a whole different range, right? And the way they communicate is different. The, the, sh the signs they outwardly show is different than my horse. So the only data that I can rely on if I jump on another horse is putting my heart rate monitor on that horse and watching their heart rate. I've jumped on horses and they were like, oh yeah, you know, Dawn's here. That means we get to run. We get yay. And they're so excited and so happy. And I'm watching their heart rate and going, oh, I'm sorry, baby, but um, I know you really want to run and you're having a great time, but uh, your heart, uh, your oxygen level in your body is not going to keep up and you're going to tie up at this rate. So we have to slow down. And, you know, and then usually when you can bring them back down, then they go, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I was tired. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> So that is why for, for heart rate monitoring. And it also tells you a ton of other detail, uh, uh, other information. There's a ton of other, other information that you can find out. All of the, all of the things for when people say, how do you train and condition a horse? You know, there's all of this stuff, um, on how to do it. But if you have real numbers, real data, all, you know, numbers and data is subjective as well, but it's still something. I mean, none of this is an absolute guarantee, but it is better than nothing. So, you know, knowing your horse, definitely, that, that is top, top-notch advice. But then having objective data that cannot be changed, that cannot be lied or, or influenced or, you know, whatever by, by, um, by, you know, the horse trying to hide it or whatever, that is invaluable. So, so that is, um, that's why I think I'm just repeating myself. So I'll shut up now. Anyways, um, any questions on any of this, let me know. Uh, I am a total geek and I love, I thrive on data. I thrive on analyzing it and stuff like that. So, so that is what I go for. But obviously there are many, many, different options from just a heart rate monitor to just maps to a combination of both and also you don't need something this extravagant there are watches out there that can do um, heart rate and give you some map details and stuff like that so any of those questions whatever um, it, it, just let me know it's really easy to set up um, it is pricey unless you go the free route um, you know with the app um, it, it is it, so you know well I guess I, I can say that the price range is anywhere from uh, free to you know hundreds of dollars but um, but you know to me it's worth it so anyways any questions let me know I hope this helps uh, all right ride safe talk to you later guys